I finally managed to fill a six lane freeway with traffic. Then predictably, I needed to find a balance. Dense, but flowing traffic. Now on with bigger freeways, I plan to expand the 101 through my entire map, starting here with the southern section. The southbound lanes through downtown would always congest during the morning, specifically the right lanes when the exits are busier. I decided to start with eight lanes for this section of highway, four to continue on and four to exit. Uh, that leaves an option for a fifth continuing lane in the future since the number of cars continuing and exiting will depend not only on the time of the day, but also on the day of the week. Two of the three exits that branch off here continue on to a different freeway, so I decided to split the lanes between the two of them, and then just add the surface street exit onto one of them afterwards. Using the node controller tool, you can easily shift your freeways into position without having to use move it. I think this method's much easier, and you come out with much better looking freeways compared to trying to expand them using the move it tool. Once I think everything's pretty well lined up, I always like to draw in intersection markings to make sure it connects smoothly. I usually wait to perfect most of the other details, until I test out the setup and make sure traffic flows well. Moving to the north, we can now deal with the second problem exit. In cases where an exit frequently backs up onto the highway, it's better to avoid splitting a lane between the exit and the highway itself. By removing the split lane from this exit, I'm now forcing traffic to make an extra lane change in order to reach it. Because of that, I want to give the traffic more time to change lanes. I'd already decided to lower the height of this viaduct, and for now I just wanted to make sure traffic from the other ramp would clear and that the exit would be smooth in its new location. To smoothly expand the highway to eight lanes, I started with five lanes coming from Highway 101 and two lanes merge again from the baseline freeway. With extra time to change lanes, I'm hoping the congestion won't be too bad here. You may have noticed that coming into the curve, the 101 only has four lanes. I decided to expand the left lane here. In general, this helps make traffic use the left lane further back on the highway. In order to make the lane shift happen smoothly, first I laid down intersection markings for guidelines, then using node controller, shifted the segment until the right shoulder aligned smoothly. Now that I've decided how many lanes there should be at each end of this section and where they should go, I can expand the area in between. After the La Paloma Parkway exit, the 101 has five lanes. A ramp merging from University Boulevard makes the count six before being joined by both entrances from La Paloma Parkway. That makes the eight lanes needed for the upcoming exits. With the expansion, I've also shifted the highway one lane to the right, which should help the problem I was having with too many cars using the right lanes. Adding all the lanes separately should give traffic more time to merge to the right. So I started to figure out how wide I wanted this northbound downtown section to be and ran into a couple hiccups. So again over here, I was having issues with the right lanes congesting. In order to try and help this, I added an additional lane on the right, the magenta exit only lane. Traffic merging into the seventh lane has time to get into the fifth lane and then into the fourth if they want to continue but I'm not really a fan of the alignment. I think they only have one node to spare. Anytime you have exits and entrances that close with no real time to spare, even if it flows initially, a slight surge in traffic on one of those entrances could cause it to back up. Also, another problem I noticed was the design doesn't make it easy to expand the highway to the north, which I plan to do in the future. Since I'll probably have to completely redesign the northbound lanes in the future, I decided to move on, being sure to allow for the 101 to be widened at La Paloma Parkway. Now this interchange right here, two freeways merge into the 101. And obviously, having them both merge into the right lane was causing some problems. I had to put an exit here for 18th Street at first, but it's way too close for the merging freeways, so I'm going to get rid of that or move it somewhere else. My plan was to start by giving a merge lane to the orange ramp from Shipway Isle Parkway. Then the merge lane would exit to a sunken ramp. This ramp would connect to 18th Street, replacing the one I just removed. Next merges from both the Archipelago Highway and the Harbor Freeway would now get their own continuing lanes. This brings the lane count to 8. And I plan to leave the merge from 18th Street and just briefly expand the highway Highway to nine lanes. At La Paloma Parkway, the highway would then narrow to five lanes, but I left the option for a sixth lane later. When I started to ponder how to connect the sunken exit, I realized that it would be a lot of work. Since there was already a high capacity exit for 14th Street, I wasn't really wanting to do that unless it was absolutely necessary, so I decided to test it out first. And the mistake I made when designing the 14th and 15th Street exits was taking inspiration from Denver. Somewhere in my mind, I know I was thinking of the Park Avenue and maybe the 20th Street HOV exit when I designed this. After tweaking the lane connections and the time traffic lights, I decided everything was working well enough to justify not building that 18th Street exit that I dreaded so much. This area still needs some work, and I might make that into a future episode. Now with that exit eliminated, I can finalize my design for this section of highway. I decided to allow the 7th lane to continue for now, since the congestion in this area is always stuck more in the right lanes. I'm still going to allow each of these entrances to have their own lanes, making the total count 9 coming to the raised section. Once 
once I had done that, I had a frustrating epiphany. I hadn't considered where the extra lane would end or which lane would end. In addition, I didn't build the raised section as wide as I was planning. After moving the entrance ramp slightly to the right, I expanded the highway through its transition into the raised section. There would still need to be a lane ending here, and I chose to end the left lane because again, the right lanes are busier through this area. To do this, I just needed to shift the highway slightly to the right. The node controller lines up the nodes really well when you shift them different amounts. The congestion from the southbound 15th street exit will hopefully clear up since I fixed the traffic lights, but I may need to give that exit its own lane in the future. Now I can expand the northbound raised section to the width I'd originally planned. Eight lanes barely fit through this section, and I had to move the retaining wall back slightly in order to get it to fit. This would have needed to happen anyway when the downtown lanes are expanded again though, so I definitely think this is the right size. Looking back at the southbound side, here I left the option open to add a fifth lane to the 101. I'm gonna wait to see how traffic flows before doing that, especially because it would probably also mean eliminating the 18th street entrance. It's possible I could still fit the entrance from 17th street if I decide to do that, but the 18th street one would definitely have to go. Further ahead, the Harbor Freeway merge can stay the same for now. This area sometimes has congested traffic in the right lanes. I think because of the Pacific Coast Highway only having two exit lanes here, I added a merge lane from the 13th street ramp that can now be the exit only lane for Shipway Isle Parkway. This way, both the 101 and the Pacific Coast Highway can have three lanes coming up to the split. Looking at the traffic flow through the unexpanded southbound section, I don't think it needs another lane just yet. It's worth noting that the northern end of the 101 is very congested, and it is the next section of highway I will expand. Once I remove this bottleneck, more traffic will probably flow south, making it necessary to add a fifth lane. A quick thank you to everyone who subscribed so far. A month ago, I didn't even know how to begin making a guide. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have if it weren't for your support. This is my fifth guide now, and I'm excited to keep making more videos. I hope this one's a step up from the others. I put a lot more time into it. I'm still trying to figure out the pace, so let me know in the comments if you think it should be any slower. Going forward, I'm going to post a more detailed guide every other Saturday, with other videos in between as time allows. I'll be announcing my upcoming videos on Twitter, so you can follow there to find out what's coming up. Also, video ideas are always appreciated. I'll see you guys next time.